Hi guys, my name is Jenna Jo and this is actually going to be my very first painting video so welcome to my channel, I hope you guys will have fun and let's begin. So for that video I've decided to try to draw and paint characters from um, Ghost in the Shell. I went to see the movie last week and I really really enjoyed it and I decided to give those characters a go. So this is me sketching uh, Motoko Kazanagi and the Geisha bot from uh, the movie. So uh, the sketching is a really, really, really important step and you don't want to skip it because it really allows you to really determine where you're exactly going to put each character and how they're going to fill the space on the paper. As you can see, I've carefully taped the size of my paper so when the paint dries, I will have that really nice, super clean frame all around my painting, making it look so much more professional. So moving on to inking right now. So um, something really important that you need to remember about inking is that you want to make sure that the lines are clean and sharp and that your hand isn't shaking or trembling. And I know that this isn't always easy because sometimes when you're overthinking, um, you might just lose the point and your lines might look a little bit shaky and you really don't want that on your drawing because um, you know, sharp lines and super clean lines will make your painting in general and all your art in general look so much more professional. So you really want to um, keep your hands steady and um, really, really try to um, make these um, lines as neat as they can be. Moving on to painting, so I'm using actually the wet on wet technique and if you guys aren't familiar with that technique, it's basically uh, the paper is already wet before applying the paint and therefore it allows the paint to kind of spray like almost freely, you know, nicely on the paper without you mining too much and as the left side of the paper goes I've decided to go with some kind of artistic transition where everything is kind of artistically messy and I decided to go with that muddy well yeah muddy almost dirty kind of color and here I'm adding different shades of gold and bronze to kind of play with um, you know the the background and the dimension. The reason why I chose that particular color is because you know both of my characters are going to be so much colorful that I didn't want to go too crazy with the background. And I decided to mix two different colors. The first one being that muddy color, and the second one being that Pacific blue color because I think the two colors really really blend so well together. They really really work well together. I've used that combination earlier in another painting, and I thought it gave it that really almost steampunky effect that I thought, that I thought was really, really interesting. So moving on to my Gesha Bart, well, face slash mask. Um, so in the movie you can clearly see that she has that really distinctive um, pink slash red circle on her face and here I'm really trying to work with um, the reflection, the highlights and the shadows because you know you want to give that um, her skin, well this is not skin obviously, but you want to give her face that almost porcelain like um, feature that is really, really important. So as that video goes I will add progressively different shades of red and uh, white to really give her face that polish, shiny kind of look. So while I'm waiting for her, um, for her face to dry, I'm working on the effects on her hair and skin. So right now I'm just painting basic kind of uh, shadows and spraying the color in there but I'll go back to it in a moment with my uh, color pencils. 
So moving on to Motoko's hair, um, so you, as you know, both of that characters have actually really dark hair, and you don't want to choose the same color for both of them because obviously, you know, they are going to look like one and the same. We don't really want that. So for Motoko's hair, I've decided to go with the um, same kind of color that she has in the anime version, and this is this really dark, super cool. Uh, indigo, I don't know, blue, yeah, I guess, blue color. And again, I will go back to her hair with my color pencil in a moment. Moving on to her face and skin, so something really important, maybe that is obvious, but something really important that you need to remember is that um, no one's skin is made of one unique color, so you want to make sure that, um, you know, the skin looks as realistic as possible by adding different shades of pink and peachy colors and beige and also orange, yellow maybe you know, until you reach the desired effect. So now that my geisha's face is dried, I can go back to it and add even more definition to it by adding shadows and highlights. So moving on to the coat or dress, I don't really know the, you know, her kimono. Um, so in the movie, the collar, the collar that she is wearing looks like it's made of glass or something, you know, really translucent and um, really sharp as a blade. So I thought I should go with that really, really bright blue collar to make it pop and leave space for um, white highlights to make it even more shiny. As far as the coat slash kimono goes goes on, I didn't really mind the small details on um, the dress because I will go back to it in a moment with my color pencils. So now I've moved on to uh, Motoko's body and in the movie her body is made of that really cool white material that kind of reflects light but not that much. Just enough so you can sometimes have a glance of different shades of colors like pink and and blue and yellow and it's really really discreet so i didn't want to you know go too crazy with the colors so what i decided to do was just spray some yellow and pink and blue here and there and just blend it with a paper The cool thing about watercolor is that basically you can add layers and layers forever and ever until you reach your desired effect. So there is no particular rule for that. Um, so now, um, that is something I decided to add really, really in the end, and I wasn't quite sure about it. So if you guys seen some merchandise of all posters from the movie you could see that all those you know TV screen almost like distortions that go you know around the title I thought they were really cool but how could I possibly reproduce them with with paint that was almost impossible so I decided to go with my own take on them by adding different lines it's, it's almost chaotic it looks somehow like the matrix I don't know and yeah I thought that that could give it a really cool impression as I told you before I went back to um, the highlights and the shadows with my color pencils that is really a super trick to know so when the paint is dry there is nothing better than going back to it with well, color pencils because they're going to pop up uh, literally and it will make you know, the, the, the colors brighter immediately, it will give it that super high defined look. And now as I'm taking off the um, tape around the size, you can see that it gives it that super clean frame. And there goes the title and the signature and we are done.
So that was it for today. Thank you guys again for watching. If you liked that video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and leave a comment and subscribe. Uh, if you guys got any suggestion, any character from any uh, franchise you would like me to paint or draw for you, feel free to ask for it in the comment section below. Till then, um, yeah. Uh, thank you guys again for watching. I guess I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Sometimes we forget why we're here. It's easy to fall off track. These help us remember.